their growing network of Crusader castles was a clear sign that they intended to stay and colonize Arab territory. But the Arab world did nothing. It was paralyzed by internal conflicts. There wasn't a unity of purpose in the Arab world. It took the Arabs and the Muslims a long time to work out a formula by which they can actually counterattack. And this didn't happen until uh, after the First Crusade had taken deep roots in society. As a young man, Saladin was under the command of his warrior uncle, Shirku, in Egypt. In time, Saladin would unite the feuding factions of the Arab world and take on the Crusaders. But like Richard, he began his rise to power, fighting his neighbors. As Egypt's ruler, Shirku ordered Saladin to stamp out his Muslim rivals. An unlikely beginning for Islam's holiest of warriors. But a twist of fate would change his life forever. Shirku died from overeating. As his nephew, Saladin took command. It slowly dawned on him that he was destined for leadership and that this suited him, that and people were willing to follow his leadership, and he built on it. Egypt was the richest country in the Middle East, the perfect power base for a young warrior. As soon as he became ruler of Egypt, Salah Abdin conceived of the idea of setting up a monarchy. However, at the start, he did not have plans to liberate Jerusalem, but rather he desired a vast kingdom, an empire. Saladin spent the next decade attacking his Muslim neighbors. With the might of Egypt behind him, he brought Arabia and Syria under his control. Only a small enclave was left untouched. The Crusader occupied Kingdom of Jerusalem. After many years of fighting, Saladin was the most powerful man in the Middle East. But now approaching 50, he was criticized by Muslim holy men. A number of clerics and religious scholars started criticizing him and asked, for how long will you keep fighting for power? People were asking him to stop the bloodshed of Muslims. They said, enough is enough. Driven by ambition, Saladin had killed many Muslims on his rise to power. Now he searched for a way to atone and show he was also a pious man. The answer only came to him after a near-death experience. In the spring of 1185, he fell gravely ill. On the brink of death, Saladin called his holy men to him. Salah Din lived in the religious atmosphere. He believed in the mystical power of a holy man 
and supernatural actions or miracles. While listening to his holy men read from the Quran, Saladin had a revelation. He became obsessed with the idea of liberating Jerusalem and that such a task would bring him forgiveness of his sins and God's rewards. As Saladin began to recover, his belief that God had spared him from death so that he could retake Jerusalem dominated his thoughts. He started to realize how he could both do God's will and unite the Arab world under his leadership. He would use the power of religion to create an indignant rage in the people of Islam. He would call for a jihad, a righteous struggle in which all good Muslims were obliged to rid the occupied territory of the infidels. Saladin spread news of his jihad throughout the Middle East. His scribes wrote of a new holy war. Saladin wanted to remind everyone of the importance of Jerusalem to the Muslims. It was the place where the Prophet Muhammad went to heaven to speak to God. The holy city had to be taken back. He used religion because that's all they had. This is the culture. So he used what was available to him. And he used it effectively in a positive sense. He wasn't manipulating religion, but there was nothing else. This was the only element which could bring people together and make them feel that there was an ideal they were striving for. Crusaders returning from the Holy Land brought news of Saladin's rise to power and the precarious position of the Franks in Jerusalem. But Richard and Christendom's other European leaders were preoccupied fighting each other. They felt they could spare no men to intervene in the Holy Land. For Saladin, it was the perfect time to act. Once Saladin had built up this confederation of people from Egypt, Damascus, and northern Syria, and created this moral pressure on people to join in his jihad, he then had to deliver. There was an immediacy, a need for him to fight the Christians in 1187. Otherwise, the confederation would break up. Inside the holy city of Jerusalem, the occupying Franks feared the united Islamic forces. They'd written to the Pope and kings in Europe, begging for help, but received no response. Now, in the summer of 1187, they took the terrifying decision to fight Saladin alone. It's not a decision that people took very often in the Middle Ages to risk a battle against so successful a commander with such great resources at his disposal at, as Saladin had, meant that you were taking three, four times the normal terrible risk 